Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. My name is Noel McFoy, and that was Asaph Adonai on piano. Thanks, Asaph. Sure. What song was that? That is a song called Saturday Night is the Loneliest Night in the Week. Oh. Break so that's right. <laughs> nice, nice. It's a good song. Nice. Awesome. So we have a great show for you guys. We have a whole bunch of clips. We have a whole bunch of... Uh, um, news items that are going on and a whole bunch of um, government things that are affecting you today in Missoula. So wake up, Missoula! But of course, uh, let's talk a little bit about weather because tonight the weather is looking pretty nice compared to a, a nice late fall, early winter weather. You know, it's currently 31 degrees outside, you know, but it's going to get a high of 54 with a low of 30 degrees. So it's going to basically be touching freezing temperatures. Um, Thursday is going to be mostly sunny. Thursday night, things are getting a little cooler um, as. Uh, less cloud coverage will keep in the heat and then of course by the weekend you can expect mostly sunshine um shun sunshiny weather yeah just it looks not like too it's much it's gonna sun. be gorgeous this weekend a little chilly but it is fall and there was definitely frost in my window this morning yes so it frosted and you know pretty soon we'll see that snow it's on the mountains around us but not down here but of course you can find more more information by going to nationalweatherservice.gov but of course if you want to find out more information about us you can log out to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula so nice we made you write all that stuff uh, you can also <laughs> google us I assume um, also you find us on our Facebook page Wake Up Missoula is also on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula and Kat also has a Twitter page you guys can find us at MCAT TV Missoula you can like us on our Facebook page, and to find out more information, just check us out on MCAT.org. Yes, and uh, yeah, you can watch any program that's on MCAT at any time by logging on to our video on demand. You can mm -hmm. go to any of our channels on any of our website. But of course, MCAT announcements. MCAT will be live streaming the Day of the Dead Parade, not um, not like we've done in the past where we just kind of just film it and then we just put it on YouTube after the fact. But we're going to definitely put it on live tonight. Because we're all about that live streaming. We're lately. all about the live. Yes. And so where will you guys be filming from? Oh, we'll be filming from the building. We're like nice. right here, so we'll just move over there. So you won't be on top of the building, you'll be in front of the building. We'll, we'll put it on top of the building and we'll nice. run a line to uh, a state, our little um, switcher, which will also be uh, broadcasting the uh, signal via using cellular bonding. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, but, so what time? So the parade starts at 6.30, so I'm sure that these guys will go live a few moments before then. Okay. So you guys can check that out if you don't want to go out and venture. But the parade is always fun to go out and stand and watch and drink hot cocoa. And um, I've got a lot of events surrounding the parade and lots of places where you can get your face painted today. So I'll let you guys know about that later on in our show. All right. So we have, we have some news items, <laughs> I do. right? Yeah. Thanks, Scott. Okay. So you guys, the World Series is still in full swing. The Cubs beat the Indians last wow. night. Six to nine, which makes them all tied up, and the final game is tonight. So rarely there is a game seven. Most of the time it's just game six. Um, and so the Cubs haven't won a World Series since 1908, and the Indians haven't won a World Series since 1948. So they play their final game is tonight. That'll be out of in Ohio. It's going to be six o'clock Mountain Time, so I believe that's going to be seven o'clock their time. So six o'clock for us, and we'll f see who wins. It'll either be the Cubs or the mm -hmm. Indians, and history will be made either way. Yeah, wouldn't so it be nice? Exciting. If they both could win, but unfortunately someone's gonna have to win. It's true. Yeah, there's always next year for the losing team. It's true, but I mean I'm hoping for the Cubs because they haven't won in over a hundred years. Yeah. So go Cubs. Um, and then my next event or my next news thing is this is some tech news. So Android has announced new apps and features for its products to coincide with Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, which is a <laughs> film prequel to the Harry Potter series. So your vo your phone is going to be able to do some magic and cast some spells. Um, so the voice activated assistant for Android will cast Harry Potter spells using the commands Lumos and Ox to turn the flashlight on and off. And then silence O to silence notifications and the ringer. Hmm. Yeah. And so you can interact with the world of Fantastic Be Beasts on Google Street View on your phone. Um, this app will let you find wave a wand to find escaped magical magical creatures. And you can also like kind of walk the streets, which they've styled after like a vintage 1920s look. Nice. Yeah, which I thought was really fun. So that'll be coming up pretty soon. You guys check that out. And then my last news story, I thought this was really, really cool, and it's a bit of a longer one, so bear with me. Um, so we all know the story of Amelia Earhart as the first woman to fly across the Atlantic. Her plane crashed in the Pacific Open, uh, into the Pacific Ocean while she attempted to circle Earth. So most of the, you know, the theory is that she died in a, in a plane crash in the Pacific Ocean. But now they've got reason to believe 
that um so the international group for historic aircraft recovery reveals a new theory that she did not die in a plane crash that she actually crash landed on an island and died as a castaway um and so the skeleton of a castaway of a castaway was found on an island in 1940 and they believe it was belonged to Earhart. The British, um, I don't know, whoever, whoever found it the first time kind of thought that they disregarded the bones, they thought they belonged to a male, so they didn't think anything of it. Um, but they've been trying to, but T-I-G-H-A-R, which is the International Group for Historic Aircraft Recovery, has been trying to prove that it's been Amelia Earhart's bones since 1998. Um, and so they're initially dismissed to be thought of bones belong to a male, but now they can tell that um, they're consistent with a female of Earhart's height and ethnic origin. And they also discovered that her arms are, let's see, her ar forearms, the skeleton's forearms were considerably large for a European woman. So they're bigger than a European woman's. Because they're American. Yeah, and so they like put the forearms up to a picture of a, with Amelia Earhart and they said that the arms of the skeleton and Amelia Earhart looked exactly the same. Um, and then, yeah. So in August, the team revealed that Ar Earhart had also made more than 100 radio transmissions calling for help between July 2nd and July 6th of 1937, hmm. um, which rules out the possibility of her plane crashing because if her plane was dead, she wouldn't have been able to make those distress calls. Um, and so they sent out planes to look for her where the distress signals came from, but they saw no plane. They saw didn't see any plane because by that time her plane would have washed out to the ocean again, so they didn't land. Um, and so they are pretty sure that she survived some for they don't really know how long, but she survived on this island as a castaway, the you know dying from that way, not crash landing. So either way, it was pretty heroic. Hmm. And so. They have, since the late 90s, they've organized three rescue expeditions to that island to explore the area where the bones were found. And they found records of bonfires being lit in the area where the bones were found, um, as well as fish bones and bird bones. Um, and then they think that she survived weeks and maybe even months on that island. There were no other people around. Wow. Yeah, and there was also no drinkable water on the island, so they believe that she gathered water from tree leaves and rain. So Amelia Earhart, you know, didn't die, crash, you know, die in a crash landing airplane. She died as a castaway. So she's still pretty cool. Yeah, B.A. <laughs> they'll have to, um, That's they'll have to reshoot that Hillary Swank movie then. They really will, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I got my first story about the World Series. I just found it on Google, just doing some searches. And then uh, my last few stories were from CNN, so you guys can read those stories in full. Cool. Yeah. But now I have a cool. nice little uh, artsy Ooh. clip for you guys, and when we come back, I'll talk all about your local government and what they're doing and what they're up to. Winter comes ever closer. I will lose my life very soon. I am B. I don't think I can hold on much longer. Alone, so alone, still part of something bigger than me. Must find what I was sent to look for. Stuck inside, it doesn't feel like winter. Under my feet feels cold and lifeless. The world seems so big. Maybe my home will know not to come through my absence. It's only fitting that my life served its purpose. I am B. Those are beautifully yeah. tragic. Yeah, it's pretty tragic. That was that was gorgeous. Well, the, so the thing about bees and bees colonies is that they a lot of times before winter they send a lot of the bees out just to get some last minute things and mm -hmm. check the area and all that stuff. <laughs> but most of them Run die, and you know when they don't come back, it's always like, okay, remember, don't go that direction. <laughs> 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 they they're sent to die. That's, Beware. That's kinda, yeah. <laughs> but I'm, I'll be here. But I'm I'm just like every time like I think about bees now I just think about that Black Eyed Peas song I'm a bee. I'm a bee. I'm a bee. That I'm the whole a, song just is like bee. I'm a bee. I'm a bee. I'm a I'm a I'm a bee. And there's like dancing robots and everything. It's just like shut up. <laughs> they're just dancing. They're gonna be. They are. Okay. So um. <laughs> okay. Relax. Relax. Come down, Let's everybody. take it down. Okay. So the city council um they have their committee meetings today and uh, the bigger thing that they're going to be talking about is um. The winter market. So oh, the city is. Um, they're, they're talking about how they want to promote the winter market as a public event, more to promote, uh, you know, public individuals to promote, not not a competing like marketplace. 
So the idea, this is kind of like the synopsis. I'll just read it for you guys. The uh, Missoula City Council has authorized the formation of a number of public markets in the community. Local farmers and other vendors of produce, meats, eggs, prepared food, and arts and crafts are seeking further opportunities to promote and sell their products past this summer market season and would provide um, adverse com um, competition to existing public markets authorized by the City Council. A uh, coalition of individuals and businesses ex experienced in Missoula summer and past winter markets are seeking to ensure that this sustainable winter market in Missoula. Although Missoula's winter market established by the City Council Resolution number 7732 has failed to continue past its inaugural season because they tried to do it at the fairgrounds, it didn't really work out. They did it at the Hive, which really got a lot of these people actually together yeah. talking. And then of course the Hive sold out because uh, yeah. they now have like the international school, yep. which is now going to be moving to now working with the city to build a new facility and mm -hmm. that's causing some kind of um, people saying why and then and other stuff yeah but of course that's basically what they're going to be talking about um today during uh, the uh i think it's a public works committee cool so we'll be able to have a real established winter market that may or may not be there at times you yeah. know that'll actually be there and not just be like yeah. it'll be like there. a weekly market get, bring people together Good. it's not it'll be probably nice. more heavily on the arts and craft stuff and maybe more about jams and jarring yeah. and maybe baking and whatnot mm -hmm. that's um, awesome it seems like it's more like an import kind of like a marketplace but anyways, the next meeting is uh, they're probably gonna, uh, is going to be talking about the jail diversion program, and this is admin and finance, which I always thought this would be part of public safety and health, but of course this is mostly about um, saving peop taxpayers money in the using the jail diversion program. So initiated in 2015 by council um, member um, Emily Bentley, Commissioner Rowley, and Sheriff uh, T J McDermott, the jail diversion master plan JDMP. Uh, proposes short and long-term um, policy and procedures changes to reduce number of non-violent uh, arrestees and offenders in Missoula County Detention Facility. The target population for diversion includes individuals charged with non-violent offenses who can be appropriately placed in environments that are less restrictive than jail. So nice. that's the whole idea of what they're trying to do, is they're trying to basically prevent any kind of overcrowding because I've talked to some of the um, police officers in the past through interviews and do like the sheriff's election mm -hmm. and they said if you build it they will come <laughs> <laughs> that's what they that's <laughs> yeah that's hilarious and terrible <laughs> <laughs> it's very cynical minded but um they what? said that, that, that they had overpopulation at the um the county jail mm -hmm. and of course the city jail you know just like over here um they already have overcrowded and that's supposed to be like one of those like rotational things they just kind of keep there pending trials yep. and stuff but most of the time they send them over to the county detention facility for processing and stuff. So it'd be good to have an alternative space for these non-violent offenders mm -hmm. so they can actually, yeah, cut back on county tax dollars and make them feel maybe, you know, that the crime wasn't as, like, I don't know, non-violent. It really depends upon the crime. It, it really it, does, they get, yeah. They get caught with uh, legal substances. Yeah. Like say, and that's it. You know, like, that they're not trying to kill anyone. They're just wrong place, wrong time, wrong thing on them. Mm. Yeah. Cool. So what time is that meeting going to be? Uh, the meeting will be on uh, the, this afternoon. Actually, there's only going to be three meetings this morning starting from 10, and it's going to end probably by noon. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really quick. It's going to be really short. Nice. And the city council will talk about this and d determine whether or not they want to put this on the con consent agenda, which they'll talk about on the following Monday's meeting, which I'm pretty sure may or may not happen because it's the Monday before election. So I'm yeah. pretty sure that they're going to hold off another week before city council's back. So that is some basic uh, city council stuff. Nice. And up next I have for you guys, um, let's see, I have um, a brand new... Uh, Actually, this isn't really a new program, but it's a program that's coming up that you should check on our channel as well. And it is Tell Us Something. And the featured uh, speaker in this video is our mayor, John Ng. Uh, so apparently there's a three minute rule in effect this evening. Is that what you all have heard? So, yeah. Any public comment? I'd like to hear from you before I start talking, if that's okay. Uh, <clears throat> forks in the road. Um, interesting. Uh, so, mo most of my familiarity with forks in the road began when I actually uh, physically found a fork in the road. Um, 
and picked it up um, and then began enjoying a lot of carbs and bacon. Uh, <laughs> Hello, you guys. We're back. And I do have to say before I move on that our mayor looks pretty awesome after his surgery. So good for you, mayor, for taking charge of your health. All right. So it is Wednesday, and uh, you guys have got a bunch of fitness classes going on and some other things happening. Um, so up first at 9 a.m. over at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center, they will have our bar a bear <coughs> fitness class. Uh, that'll be from the 2nd of November until the 21st of December. That'll be from 9 to 10 for 30 bucks. We have a yoga core fusion at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center, 9 a.m. Wednesdays from November 2nd till December 21st. That'll be from 9 to 10, it'll be $36. We have pole fitness over at Mask Studio, that's at 9 a.m., that's every Wednesday at 9 o'clock. And then we have introduction to Pilates Reformer. This is gonna be at, the, at Alpine Physical Therapy at 2965 Stockyard Road. Starts at 9.30 till 10.30, 55 bucks. It'll be from the 2nd of November till the, till the 23rd of, no of November. We've got Yoga for Wellness with Rasa O'Neill. That'll be at the Learning Center at Red Willow. That'll be $40 for four weeks or $12 to drop in. It's an ongoing class, so you guys can just drop in anytime. At the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center is over 50 and fit, starting from 10 to 11, $36. It'll be the 2nd of November until the 24th of December, so just before Christmas. We'll have bar fitness at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center, starting at 10.15 to 11.15, the 2nd of November until the 21st of December for only $30. Taekwondo is at the Children's Museum of Missoula. That'll be starting at 11 o'clock until 11.30. Uh, that'll be put on by Championship Training. And then over at the Missoula Public Library at 115 is an origami crane folding demonstration. Um, and so it'll be cr the Cranium, which is a local group of origami enthusiasts, for the crane folding demonstration. Uh, they're going to be folding a thousand piece cranes at the two tables in front of the large display case located downstairs foyer from 115 to 315 today. And then over at the, well, put on by the Zootown Arts Community Center, but at Karis Park, they've got their face painting and pre-parade party. You guys know that today is the day of the Festival of the Dead, and they'll have their parade later on this evening. Um, and so at Karis Park from 2 to 5, there'll be live music, food, special, Festival of the Dead, beer brewed by the Kettle House, and draft works. And they'll have a free face painting. They'll have two stations set up. They'll have people that can do your face painting for you, and then a station where you can do your own. <laughs> do it yourself. Also at Black Owl Tattoo, they're going to have live body painting from 3 to 8, and then they'll have a sh photo shoot at 8 p.m., so you guys can go check that out, walk by, see what they're up to today. Um, and then their live body painting will be of the theme of the day, which, of course, will be the Festival of the Day. At the Missoula Public Library, they've got middle school writers starting at 3.30 until 5.00. And then we've got a beginning intermediate Pilates reformer that'll be at the core studio at Alpine Physical Therapy, 2965 Stockyard Road. That'll be from 4.30 to 5.30 from the 2nd of November to the 21st of December and it'll be $104. Bear Fitness is at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center from 4.30 to 5.30, 30 bucks from the 2nd of November to the 21st of December. We've got Gentle Yoga, that'll be at 4.30 from the 2nd of November to the 21st of December, $30 from 4.30 to 5.30, also the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center. Tabata Boot Camp will be at the same place, starting at 4.30 from the 2nd of November to the 21st of December. And then over at the Downtown Dance Collective, we've got Ballet's Greatest Hits, Adult Ballet Class starts at 5.00. Um, and then over at the Missoula Public Library starting at 5 o'clock, um, they have got more of the Festival of the Dead parade prep. Um, so they, their theme is the Dead Speaks Volumes, which emphasizes the sacred duty of the library to collect and share our stories. Um, and so you can meet at the public library between 5 and 6 to pick up signs, apply makeup, and get organized. And you can, you can march with the library if you don't have anyone else to march with. We've got an introduction to Coraline class. That'll be at the Alpine Physical Therapy Studio at 2965 Stockyard Road from the 2nd of November till the 23rd of November, uh, starting at 5.30, and it'll be 55 bucks. We have cycling intervals at the D Dickinson, Le Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center from the 2nd of November, 21st of December, 5.35 to 6.35 for $35. 
And then there's going to be a grant writing basics class. It'll be show you some str strategies to apply and receive funding that you need. This will be held at Frenchtown Junior High School from 5 dollars to 7 dollars $52 from the 2nd of November to the 7th of December. And we've got more classes. Uh, introduction to ULA will be on Wednesdays at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center from the 2nd of November to the 21st of December at 5.45 for only $30. And they've got yoga at the same time, 5.45 from the 2nd until the 21st of December. Um, and that's $36 and it lasts until 7 o'clock. Then over at Green Path Herb School is their Green Pharmacy Series Herbal Percolation. That'll be at 6 o'clock. Richie will be playing at Great Britain Brewing Company at 6 o'clock. And then we have our actual Festival of the Dead Parade. That'll start at the Red X's right at 6.30. Um, and that'll walk through the end, through Higgins and end at Karis Park. Well, they'll have music and fire spinning and lots of cool stuff to round out the parade. So if you guys want to march but don't know who to march with, you can march with the Zootown Arts Community Center or the Missoula Public Library. Um, and then, you know, you get your face painted at all these different locations beforehand. And then I've got two more events for your Wednesday. Up first is the Sunrise Saloon. It's got country dance lessons with instructor Kathy Clark. Starts at 7. It's only $5 per lesson, so you can learn how to do country swing, country dancing. And then over at the University of Montana, today is Diverse U, which is an all-day event celebrating the uniqueness and diversity that surrounds Missoula and that Missoula really kind of needs. Um, and so the Black Lives Matter, one of the founders, Patrice Cullors, is is gonna be here. She's an artist and a co-founder of the Black Lives Matter movement, and she'll be the keynote presenter at Diverse U. She'll highlight her work with the Black Lives Matters and the racial issues they are dealing with today. So that'll be at the University of Montana, and I'm sure that will be a very, very cool thing to see. So that's what's going on in your community. We're switching gears now. We're going to musical notes with Asaf Adonai. Well, before I start, one week from, or less than one week from today, we'll have a new president. I'm not endorsing any candidate. I'm just making a little statement there. We're gonna, isn't that something? A new president. It's not weird. Yeah. Yeah. In less than a week. And also, you are, you already mentioned the uh, World Series game. I was gonna comment on it, but no need now because you guys already covered that. Anyway, just yesterday, I have a friend named Valerie, and she took me to the bowling alley, and I got to watch clients from the Opportunity Resources. These are people with physical challenges, and they were having the time of their lives bowling and trying to knock down 10 pins. Our guest on today's musical notes, never brash or flashy in plastic frame, Marshwood style glasses. Like Clark Kent, our guest, though he didn't have any physical challenges, he was called the Doomsday Stroking Machine. <laughs> yeah. And by 1988, our guest held 25 career 300 games. Can you believe that? 25 times he scored 300. He's the greatest bowler ever in history and the best bowler who ever lived, and he's been voted the bowler of the millennium. We're talking about Earl Roderick Anthony, known to the world as Earl Anthony, and there he is on the screen. I mean, this guy was like Superman with a bowling ball. He was just a <laughs> force to be reckoned with. And I used to have the joy of watching him and just the delight and the joy that this man brought to the world and to television at that time with his skills in golfing. In fact, he's credited with um, bringing the interest of golf, uh, not golf, bowling to the American public. That's how skilled this man was. Tell you a little bit about him. Earl Anthony, born 1938, was a left-handed American professional bowler who amassed records of 43 titles, six player of the year awards, on the Professional Bowlers Association PBA Tour, and for two decades, his career title counts. He's won 43 of those titles, setting that all-time record. Widely credited, as I say, with the increase of bowling's popularity, he's the first bowler to ever earn 100,000 in one season in 1975. He's also the first bowler to reach $1 million in a lifetime of PBA earnings in 1982. Isn't that something? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this guy got bowled like you wouldn't believe. I, I, think, I think if he was born, the Lord just said, hey, 
we're gonna make this guy the greatest bowler ever. And I think he just came out, Mom, get me a bowling ball. <laughs> or he came out like a bowling ball. Yeah, I mean, he just, he, he was just so skilled, this guy. The, the, some of the nicknames that his colleagues called him, they called him Square Earl, they called him um, Earl the Pearl, and of course, the Doomsday Strucking Machine, as I mentioned. <laughs> Now, he um, got his first of 43 PBA titles back in 1970. His final was in 1983 in the Toledo Trust PBA National Championships. So he just delighted his fans and delighted colleagues alike. Born in Tacoma, Washington, he was also a minor league baseball pitcher with the Baltimore Orioles, and he was also an excellent golfer, too. And he had a near scratch handicap at the age of 60 playing this game. So that's pretty cool there. And uh, finally, his uh, accomplishments, some of his other accomplishments. In 2008, the PBA celebrated 50 years of existence by a panel ranking the top 50 bowlers. And of course, Earl Anthony was voted number one. So that says something too. Six time BWAA Bowler of the Year from 74 to 76, 81 to 83, 12 time first team All American from 72 to 83, established a record for a consecutive PB, uh, PBA season winnings 15 times. Wow, isn't that something? Inducted into the PBA Hall of Fame in 81 and finally inducted into the ABC, which is now the USBC Hall of Fame in 86 and voted the Bowler of the Millennium in 2000 by Bowling Digest, the greatest bowler that ever lived. And I'll stop on that note. Nice. I think is he still around? No, we lost him. I got it right here. We lost him in 2001 at the age of 63. Wow. But in his 63 years, this guy, he just, there wasn't anything this guy could do. I mean, he was so skilled. They got a split like this, and he could hit the ball here, uh, uh, the pin here, and knock the pin Ooh. on the other side. Yeah. And he didn't spin around or you could do those curve split. shots, you know, like a lot of current bowlers. He could just throw straight and. Wow. Yeah, that's talent, definitely. Cool. Yeah, he was Thanks, good. Lisa. Sure. Up next, we've got an art clip. This is going to be the Day of the Festival Day of the Dead art show. This is yes. going to be at the Zootown Arts Community Center until November 7th, so only a couple more days to watch it. And you can totally check it out when you get your face painted this afternoon. I'm, I'm thinking about taking my kids over there. You should. It's, it'll be at Karis Park. Oh, it's going to be at Karis Park? Not, not the do? Zach. At Karis Park. But the Zach will be there. Oh, right. Yeah, so from 2 to 5 at Karis Park.
Hello you guys, we're back and we've got things happening on Thursday. So on Thursday, this is just kind of a general mix of events happening in Missoula. Uh, first, we've got our family fun time of the YMCA. It starts at 9 a.m. This is every Tuesdays and Thursdays um, from 9 to 11.30. And this is for adults and kids. Adults can chill and hang out on some comfy couches, drink some coffee or tea, and then children get to go crazy and run around and do activities. And, and then adults can join in too, unless they want to hang out. We have our NAMI Missoula Weekly Meeting at our Providence Center at 10 a.m. This is for anyone affected by mental illness or interested in learning about NAMI. Tiny Tales is at the Public Library at 10.30. This is for babies ages birth through three years to sing songs, learn finger plays, hear nursery rhymes, as well as stories. Preschool Play Group is at Ruth Zachra Sports Center at 11. This is for ages walking to five years. They set up different activities and stations around the gym, and parents and children get to rotate and choose what they want to do. Active Cube will be at the Children's Museum of Missoula at 11. They roll a dice, roll a cube, and you get to do whatever every activity it comes up as. At the Learning Center at Red Willow, we have Meditation for Veterans at 1.15. This is a 30-minute guided med mindfulness practice for veterans and their caregivers. At NAMI Missoula, located at 202 Brook Street, we have our NAMI Connection Support Group starting at 1.30. This is for adults living with mental illness. At the Big Sky High School, they've got Make It and Take It. This starts at 2.30. So what it is, is every Thursday they have a harvest theme project. So that'll be at 2.30 in the Innovation Station in the library. And you guys can make your project and then take it home with you. At the Public Library, they've got computer electronics in their makerspace from 3 to 6. You can work on a project of your choice or learn how to use their equipment. And then, over at the Missoula Fencing Association, they've got a little pirate's fencing class. So it's at 3.15, it goes until 4 o'clock. It's gonna be for ages six to eight. Uh, students will learn the basics of fencing and work on coordination through a series of fun games and activities. It means Thursdays from 3.15 to four for six weeks. It's $60, which includes all the equipment. So if you guys wanna register, you can go to missoulafencing.net or you can call 251 four six two three to sign up lego club is at the missoula public library at 3 30. also at 3 30 across the street is spider feeding over the missoula insectarium they feed rosie the chilean rose hair tarantula every day um i think it's i believe it's at different times but on thursdays it's at 3 30. so you can learn about spiders hunting and feeding habits and watch her eat this bug or whatever it is it might even be like a mouse pretty sweet Lockwood will be playing Draft Rooks Brewing Company at 6 o'clock. And then at Imagination Brewing Company, there's going to be a discussion to learn and bring awareness about what cultural appropriation is and uh, cultural appropriation rights through different speakers. I think uh, with the whole political correctness wave that has kind of swept the country, uh, cultural appropriation is a huge topic for people and it's a hot topic. There's even an article today in today's Missoulian about how people think that the Day of the Dead parade is cultural appropriation. Um, and so that's actually a great article and it's got some good reasons. As as to why it's not so you guys can check that out that's in the Missoulian but appropriation is quite a hot topic so if you guys want to learn more about that more about appropriation rights uh, you can check that out that's gonna be at the imagination Brewing company from 6 to 8 tomorrow over at the UN Park TV Center at the University of Montana, there's a public lecture, an introduction to semiotics. It starts at 6.30. Um, and so, yeah. So I don't really know what semiotics is. So you guys can check that out. I'm not quite sure. Um, but it should be free. And then it looks like they've got a gallery preview as well of present tense prints from the collections of Jordan D. Jordan D. Schnitzer and his family foundation. So that'll be in the galleries. Um, and so the lecture begins at 7, and then you guys can check out the art show at 6.30. Oh, to Open Way Mindfulness Center, they've got a mindful community conversation series that starts at 7.30 until 9. And so they're going to be sharing. So uh, the speaker is David Maslanka, who was ordained into the Order of Interbeing in 2007. We'll be sharing... Don't laugh, Scott. <laughs> and we'll be sharing his personal experience and Buddhist practices regarding dealing with anger, fear, hatred, and other difficult emotions, which need to not be seen as negative things to be isolated and getting rid of, but as holding energy, you know, place of energy. You know, Scott, you could really do well with this class. <laughs> Old man rant, always grumpy, but could use some mindfulness. 
All right. I think good balance on every emotion is good. At the Downtown Dance Collective, they've got a tap dance class for adults that starts at 7.30. There's going to be live jazz at Plunk at 8 o'clock. And then Dusk will be playing at the Sunrise Saloon at 8.30. Open mic at the Broadway at 9. There'll be Dead Hipster at the Badlander at 9 o'clock. And then Karaoke at the Dark Horse at 9. And then at the Union Club, they've got Homegrown Comedy. So it's a comedy open mic that starts at 9.30. And then at the Top Hat Lounge, we've got Lainey Lou and the Bird Dogs. They'll be playing at 10 o'clock. So you guys, this is going on in your community for today and tomorrow. As always, check out MissoulaEvents.net, the University of Montana website, the Independent, or the Missoulian for more events happening in your community. I usually find all of my events from MissoulaCommunityEvents.net. Yeah, I, I uh, got a chance to meet David Mislenka. Oh, cool. Ago. Like, I, I was in high school, and he's a composer. He writes his own music. Oh, cool. He's, a, he's one of the few acting... Um, um, full-time composers who actually makes money writing music. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Dude, this that guy sounds like he's cool. And oh, he's Dane, super chill. He's a composer yeah. that actually makes music. He's Buddhist. Well, it he's, sounds like a very interesting he's guy. He's always been, like, super chill. Like, That's awesome. Like, super chill. He's not like Mozart, who's, like, super crazy <laughs> composer, and then, then died young. Yeah, basically. Mozart lived But Mozart fast. got sick, and then he died. He lived fast, died young. Well, he got sick. If he didn't get sick, he would have died. What did died. he get sick from? Uh, just like a general, I think he got like a flu. Was it like the plague or something? Like a no, a it wasn't flu? a plague thing. It Sometimes was just like the flu can kill you. Yeah, well, like, even especially today. back in those days. Oh yeah, like two hundred. No, like it was like three hundred years ago now. But anyways, uh -huh. um, well, R.I.P. Mozart. All right, so I have a brand new. Um, Stop animated movie in my Scott Ramp anthology. So mm -hmm. check it out. Here it is, and when we come back, we'll have Hallmark or Bullmark. Doing it out there. Hello? Wait, hold on a second. Where are you? Where is anybody? I've been running around in circles, looking for things. What's going on in here? Wait, wait, wait a minute. Sorry, babe. I must have zoned out for a second there. <laughs> you! Uh, hold on. Let me explain. Uh, out of my way. Uh. What are you looking at? The end. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Scott. Nice. <laughs> that was really funny. <laughs> you! <laughs> I like that. That was cool. I like the beginning. And I did not expect that at all. Yeah. Yeah. That it's was all nice. basically in his mind. Yeah. He was like zoning out. He was just out. like zoning out. <laughs> nice. So is that what happens when you like women ramble on about things guys don't care about? Well, it, it's all about how you engage in a conversation. Because if you're just talking about yourself the whole time, it's mostly about you talking about you. You're not really engaging with the other person. Yeah. It's basic communication. But of course, here is one of my favorite of all time segments, which I Yay! forgot to position the camera. So let me position the camera. Uh, it's called Hallmark or Bullmark. Woo! <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay, come on. Stop all right, your let's do this. Do <laughs> I want to play the game. <laughs> and hit it. <laughs> When a TV personality has an on-air confession about hating Christmas, she is invited to the most Christmassy town in U.S. to try and repair her image. Forced to work with her ex-boyfriend, Jack, the show's producer, the magic of Christmas and this special town will change the way she views Christmas 
and her life. <laughs> and the movie is called Every Christmas Has a Story. Is this Hallmark or Bullmark? So the way, the, way, the way this game works is that I read a synopsis from a Hallmark original movie, or do I? And you guys have to determine whether it's real, Hallmark, or fake, Bullmark. So what do you guys think? Is it Hallmark or is it Bullmark? Um, I'm going to say I, ooh. I'm gonna say Hallmark. Me too. I'm gonna go with Hallmark. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys are right. It yeah! is Hallmark. Nice. Because it's that time of the season <laughs> in November when the Hallmark Channel is like, what are we gonna do? Uh, let's just do Christmas, Christmas movies. movies. Everyone now. loves Christmas. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah. it's the twelve movies of Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Here's your next Christmas special by me, or is it by me? <laughs> I, re re I rewrite these regardless <laughs> if they're real or not, so you, it, you, you, yeah. it's in my words. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> Sarah Shaw is the type of woman who prefers to sit on the sidelines at work, but when her big idea for Christmas invitation, oh, uh, for a Christmas in initiative is stolen, she makes a wish to Santa that she'll finally have the courage to stand up for herself, because, you know, you need a... Uh, an old man to give you magic to stand up for yourself. Yeah, right. <laughs> Santa grants her wish, but only gives her 48 hours because, you know, you have to have a time limit on this for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> As the clock ticks, Sarah will discover how to channel the Christmas magic and speak her mind all on her own. Because, you know, Christmas magic helps her speak. <laughs> but she'll learn to speak on her own. I'm assuming there's some kind of lesson. And the movie's called A Wish for Christmas. So the idea behind this movie is, like, I'm assuming that Santa's like, Oh, I never gave you that. I never granted your wish. You had it within yourself the whole time. It's like, is that your gift? So I'm going to say this is Hallmark? <laughs> <laughs> if you want to. Hallmark. Mm, yeah, I'm going to agree. Well, you guys, uh, you know, you can't be right all the time, but you guys are right all yes! the time. Yes! <laughs> I was like, I don't know, after the way you started, like, going off on it, I was like, this is definitely Hallmark. I go off on all my stuff. No, you don't, Scott. Yeah. Um, that's hilarious. Yeah, it's, so Chris Santa, like, Santa, I need to speak up for myself and stand up for myself. Give yeah. me some magic. Yeah, it probably is like that. Santa's I got like, some magic for you and my magic set. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. I bet that's true. It just turns out that Santa never really gave her magic when it was all her. It was you all along. I was like, oh, it's always oh. been in here. And, and she's just like, oh, so it's like one of those like really thought think thinking gifts. Oh, so you ripped me off, Santa? <laughs> it's like one of those like thinking gifts. It's like you might as well just give me a card with encouraging <laughs> words. <laughs> Hence Hallmark. <laughs> Dude, I've nice. These are good movies. I want to watch that second. Yeah. I want to watch both of them. They are no. they're ridiculous. And yeah. um, the first one has one of my favorite actors in it. Who? who is um, Colin uh, Ferguson, who is uh, he did a show on Sci Fi Channel called uh, Eureka. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. He's cool. A, he's like a dumb sheriff in a town full of uh, like, I, I guess the aliens. The, I don't know. No, with a town of people who are like geniuses. Oh. And like the, the only reason they're geniuses is because they're just like total jackasses. <laughs> they're just like I'm smart. You know? It's like okay, we get it. you're smart. You don't have to act like you're smarter. It's like we get it. It's like it's like. Their interpretation of smart people is sarcastic people. What a weird concept for a show. It's a great show. It's is wonderful. It? It's like, and it's like, oh, what if we did, switched them? And then they did, and then which if we we switched, you know, like the thingy? And then the smart people was like, oh, we can totally switch the polarity of this. And that's how they just solved every single case. It just switching the polarity, huh? Yeah. You just got to Because he polarity. came up with a basic. Like um, simple, he he was a genius in common sense, mm -hmm. and the genius was just like needing to think of some kind of convoluted thing. It's just like, <laughs> oh, my hovercraft is just like hovering too much. And it's just like, oh, why don't you just turn it off? It's like, <laughs> too hard. And there's like, that's really stupid. It's like, but what if I reverse the polarity? <laughs> It'll turn off by itself with me thinking about it, it. There's always some kind of reverse in the polarity, but of course, let's reverse our polarity by going back to our website uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you can go to our website wakeupmissoula.website.com slash wakeupmissoula so nice to meet you right out to us you can see our Halloween special um, all up there you can uh, w uh, follow us on our Facebook um, page as well as following us on Twitter at wakeupmissoula we post all our videos and more 
MCAT also has a Twitter page. You guys can follow us at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on our Facebook page, Missoula Community Access Television. And to find out more information about us or watch us live, you can check out MCAT.org. I'm definitely excited to show you guys. Uh, the live, This is the very first time we're live streaming the Day of the Dead Parade. And we're going to start live streaming on our Facebook, our uh, YouTube, and of course on our website, MCAT.org. Yep. Woo! Um, so you guys can uh, catch it if you're not able to be there mm -hmm. physically during the parade. You guys can just stay at home and catch it online. And of course, if you do like us on our Facebook page, you get a notification saying that, hey, MCAT is live right now. Mm -hmm. And we will start live a little bit earlier, just kind of give like an overview of what you guys can see. And, and I think it'll be a great time because, you know, the parade um, last year was so good. It was really well done because they didn't put all the music people in one chunk. Yep. They actually spread them out. Um, Co congruently is that a right word I think so like evenly just spread it out I, I evenly, just say evenly yeah. I don't know why I yeah. think come up with like a big exciting word so it's just spreading out evenly so there's always some kind of sound either leaving and coming in at the same time that's so. cool yeah I'm looking forward to watching it on Facebook as I will be filming something at the Gallagher business yep. building so yeah. you will be able to uh, it starts at the Red X's tonight mm -hmm. which is almost like right next door to our building um, and then it'll end at Karis Park yeah they'll march which, down and do stuff at Karis Park Karis Park is amazing too mm -hmm. if you get a chance to go there because because um, they have like drummers, mm -hmm. they have big bands that just hang out in like a giant like dance circle. It's a yeah. huge party and everything. So of course, as always, you guys, you guys can go down to Karis Park today from two to five. You can get your face painted. You can drink some beer from the Kettle House and Draft Works and listen to some music. And you can also go by the public library between five and six and get your face painted, hold some signs, get organized. Yep. Light then, a paper lantern, all mm -hmm. that stuff. And then Black Owl has got live body painting. You guys can watch them do that, and maybe they'll do some face painting too. And that'll be um, from two to eight, three to eight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A lot of great stuff going mm -hmm. on today for your Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos. Mm -hmm. um, yep. It's a great way to celebrate uh, ones that have passed away in the past. And it's also, yeah, ones that have passed away, you know, remember your loved ones and also kind of celebrate life, have we have it now. Because the concept is good. if um, you remember them, they're not really dead. That's true. So, you guys, thank you for tuning in for Wake Up Missoula. My name is Noelle McAvoy. And I'm Scott Ramp. Here's Asaph Adonai on piano, and we'll see you guys on Friday.